Hello, science people. Today, I want to talk to you about the exciting world of seaweed. So seaweed is a multicellular protus. It is not a plant. Why is it not a plant? Well, it doesn't have any of the organs that plants have. It doesn't have roots, it doesn't have a stem, and it doesn't have leaves. Sure, some of its parts do resemble the parts that plants have, but they don't function the same way. Also with seaweed, its reproductive parts are open, they're not covered. And with plants, their reproductive parts are covered. And so seaweed is not a plant. It is a multicellular protist. It also falls under the classification of algae. And that's where we get the names of the different types of seaweed. So there's three different types of seaweed. We have brown algae, red algae, and green algae. Green algae are the ones that you find in freshwater and marine salt water. And some of my students are asking, where does algae come from? Because if I leave water out, or if there's running water somewhere, algae just magically shows up. Well, remember that cells have to come from cells, and so what happens is algae releases spores into the air. And so those spores are floating around the air, and when they land and find water, that is when they can grow into algae. And so it appears like algae comes out of nowhere, but it was in the air. The spores were in the air floating around and they land into this water and then they start growing. And of course, if you have water, then you have, you have algae spores all in that water as well. I think the most exciting seaweed to talk about is kelp. Kelp is considered a brown algae. Now, I know it looks kind of green when you look at it, but it is still considered a brown algae. Kelp is the largest of the seaweeds and largest of the algae. And so I want to talk to you a little bit about the structure of kelp. At the base of kelp, you have a structure that looks like roots, but it's not roots. It's called a holdfast. It's called a holdfast because it attaches the kelp to a rock or to the ocean floor. This is the anchor point. It doesn't absorb nutrients like roots do of a plant. The only purpose of the holdfast is to hold on. And so this anchors the kelp to a rock or to the ocean floor. Next, we have the stipe. The stipe is the part that holds all of the parts together on kelp. It's what we would probably consider a stem on plants. But again, it's not a stem. We call it a stipe. Branching off from the stipe are pneumatocysts. Pneumatocysts are these balls of air. And so pneumo, meaning air, like pneumatic. So pneumo, cyst, meaning a round ball or a structure. So pneumatocysts are these balls of air and they hold nitrogen in them. And what they do is they allow the kelp to float. The kelp wants to reach sunlight because kelp does photosynthesis. And so you don't wanna just lay on the ocean floor, you wanna be close to the sunlight so you can get your energy and you can make your sugar based on photosynthesis. So these pneumatocysts help float the kelp towards the sunlight. Coming out of the pneumatocysts are what we call a blade. And so the blade is what appears to look like leaves. Even though they're not leaves, we call them blades. The stipe, the pneumatocyst, and the blades all together, we call that a thallus. The thallus is the body of kelp or of seaweed. Kelp forests are a very important ecosystem in the ocean. Kelp forests can be very thick and dense, and they provide a safe haven for many marine creatures. There's a lot of fish that go to the kelp forest in order to lay their eggs or to raise their babies because in here there's places to hide. You can hide in here and avoid predators. Out in the open ocean, there's nowhere to hide. And so a lot of organisms will come to reproduce in the kelp forest. I enjoyed talking to you about seaweed. I'll see you next time.